Our guest is Ryan Bruss. Ryan, welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Ryan, you have a core message in your ministry. Now yes. you have a regular ministry, you pastor a church, yeah. you you preach and you evangelize all over the world. And in all of that, you have a core message that is really, really a basic human need for, for every single person. Donna, you can't be more right. You know, we all need the food and the clothing and yes. the shelter. We all need those things, of course. But w the deepest part within our hearts doesn't long for those things. What it longs for is love to be loved by God, to be loved by others, to, to, to know that I'm loved even in my weakness, even in my insecurity. But the, the basic human need is love. And love is not God's personality. It's who He is. God is love. Yes. And, and so when we tap into the love of the Father, it changes everything. And I want to say to the people right off the bat that God is not withholding His love from you. He loves you with an everlasting love. I mean, He's crazy about it. And, and the thing that we have to understand is the world will try to pull on us and try to, we, we've talked before about how even growing up, you know, uh, there are situations in our lives that where people try to make fun of us. And, you know, I was a Christian at five years old. Yes. And, you know, you go through life and life is hard sometimes. Mm. It really is. But when we live in the love of the Father, we can make it through anything. And people don't understand, Donna, the benefits of living loved by God. It, it just changes us. It, it changes the way I love you. Mm -hmm. It changes the the way I love myself. Mm -hmm. It changes the way I love God. And the truth is we can't ever love others more than we feel loved by God. Yes, yes. And, and so when we start living love, it changes everything. Yes. There are billions of people on the face of the earth. And there's a quote that you use. I've seen it written. I've, I've heard you say it. That is a wow. It's a wow. Yes, it's by St. Augustine. God loves every one of us as if there was just one of us. And it, it, it's powerful. And that's how much love he has to go around. You can never exhaust his love. Yes. There's plenty. Yes. And uh, see, what needs to change is my revelation of his love. Uh, his love is at the highest level for you and me, Donna, that, that yeah. it can ever be. But why do some people struggle with the love of the Father and receiving love and get, you know feeling that embrace of God? Mm -hmm. they, they struggle with it because uh, not because God doesn't love them uh, uh, as much as He loves the next person. It's our revelation of His uh, of His love for us has to has to change. Yes. And that's why I write what I do and I preach what I do about the love yes. of the Father to say, hey, let me help open up your eyes to the to the powerful truth of God's love for us. Yes. And there's a central theme even in, in the Word. Yeah. Uh, from the time we were little, you said you were born again at five years old. Yes. Uh, I went to church since I had to climb up the steps right. and, you know, right. my yeah. mom and daddy helped me up yeah. the steps uh, of the church. And there's a, there's a scripture that we all learned out of John. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And that's talking about for God so loved the world all the way before you or I, Donna, were ever even born. He loved us before the foundations of the world. And you see, uh, the, the books of our life, Psalm 139, were written based on His love for us. That, I mean, that's the incredible thing. Uh, he, he wrote about me because He loved me. And this is what I think about Ryan. This is what I think about Donna. This is what I think about everybody that's watching. And His, his book is written out of His love for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we, when we tap into those thoughts, Psalm 139, yeah. Yeah. that you know that scripture, when we tap into His thoughts about us, it just changes the way I get up in the morning, the way I interact with people, ah, you don't like me, I, I'm living loved, God loves me. I mean, it, yeah. it, it helps us yeah. to process through life's circumstances. I think that scripture for a lot of people, we gloss over it just a touch because it says, for God so loved the world. Yeah. But you really bring it down, Ryan, better yeah. than anyone that I know as far as, yeah, the world, yeah, the world, that's right. But, but me, Yes. what about me? What about those that are watching? Yes. See, the Father is very individualistic. He, he loves, He knows everything about you, Donna, the, your, the good, bad, and the ugly about us. It, but he lo that doesn't change His love for us. He loves you as if you're the only person on the earth. I am telling you, right now, wherever you're at, you can experience the embrace of Father God, feel His love, walk in His love, because you are so important to God. And, you know, the, the saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but we're the one that God's beholding. Mm. And, and 
and so he looks at us as beautiful. We, you know, uh, when I when I wake up in the morning, I don't look as good as I do right now uh, with all the makeup on. In fact, in the morning, my iPhone it, the, it doesn't recognize my face because, <laughs> so, but but God does. God recognizes my face in the morning, no matter how many bags are under my eyes, whatever. And so the important thing is we understand. His love is not uh, uh, received in our mind. Mm -hmm. It's received within our spirit. And then I live out of my spirit yes. knowing that I'm his son. Yes. Yes. You made a statement that, that I absolutely loved. And you were talking about the revelation of the Father's love. The, the revelation of not necessarily the, the Father's love because it's already there, but the revelation of his love is such a privilege for us. What, what do you mean by that? Well, see, Paul prayed in Ephesians that, uh, that we would know the height, the length, the depth, the width of the love of the Father. See, we, we need to tap into what's already been provided for us. And once we, he, here's the bottom line. The reason why people struggle with the love of the Father is because that their heart is closed up. Mm. See, let me put it this way. If we had a uh, vase of roses sitting yes. here, yes. and let's just imagine that for those who are watching, there's a vase of roses sitting here. Those roses don't have to scream out, I'm beautiful, I smell good, I, I look at me. See, they don't have to do that, they just are. Yes. And see, when you have a revelation of the love of the Father, you just are. Mm -hmm. I'm His Son. Mm -hmm. See, my son, you know my, you know my kids personally, they, they don't walk around the house saying, uh, is, is, does dad love me today? Am I, am I, uh, am I, is he approving of me today? Mm -hmm. No, my, my, my son knows that he knows that dad loves him mm -hmm. and that's enough for him. Mm -hmm. And so when we walk out of the revelation that, see, listen, myself, I'm a pastor, but I've been through the good, bad, and the ugly, my friend, but I've tapped into the revelation of his love is greater than the things I've been through. His love is even greater, watch this, than the consequences yes. of things I've done. Yes. Because he's that good. And you know, I believe in repentance and yeah. holiness, of course. But when you live loved, you understand the Father heart for your, for your yes. life. Yes, yes. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, Ryan's going to share with us his own personal journey to that revelation of God's love. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Something More. I'm here with Ryan Bruss. And Ryan, we were just talking about the revelation of God's love yes. and, and coming to know that and receive that and understand that. It has to be harder for some people than others. You know, it is. The bottom line is, as a pastor, I, see, I come across this on a regular basis. And for those who are watching, I am going to tell you, I have firsthand experience that I know it's harder for some of you to receive the love of the Father than, than for others. Uh, some people, Donna, um, they, they seem to just receive everything real easily, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but for a lot of people that I come in contact with, they don't know how to receive the love of God. And when I was seven years old, I'm 47 now, when I was seven years old, my dad got cancer. Mm. And this was in the early 80s, so uh, the, the, tech, the, the um, uh, medicine isn't there, wasn't right. there uh, right. as it is now. Right. And he had leukemia. And so uh, for five years, he struggled with the cancer. I mm. mean, he lost his hearing, he loses hair, he, you know, radiation, one thing after another. No. Um, but he still tried to be a good dad in the midst sure. of it. So at 12 years old, when I was 12 years old, my father died. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I was the oldest of the family. And it, it's not fair to lose your father at 12 years old. No. And because he got cancer at seven, when I was seven, I didn't really get to know him that well. Right. And what I knew of him was, was a man that was broken you know, mm -hmm. physically broken. And I, I don't usually say this publicly, but he got so broken that, and he was in Vietnam, so he was a man's man. Mm -hmm. uh, he got so broken that my mom used to have to carry him around the house. That's how bad he was. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so my father died, and here I am going through life as a teenager, and uh, then I get into my late teens, and the world's pressuring me as a teenager. And I was a Christian, but I didn't know how to receive the love of the Father because I felt abandoned by God right, because right, of my father. Right. And so because I felt abandoned by my father, now he didn't do it on purpose, but because I felt abandoned by my dad, I felt like God abandoned me. Mm -hmm. Because when I was going through teenage struggles, I couldn't lean over to my dad and say, dad, help me like I can with my son. Right. Because he wasn't there. 
uh, now I don't know if God's there, if God can listen. So you struggle to hear God's voice. You struggle to hear, even know that God cares mm -hmm. because God, mm -hmm. if you care, then why did my dad die? So I went through all these emotions, but I had such a rock solid foundation of God because of the house I grew up in that, that I never walked away from God, but I had to get on this journey. Everybody's talking about the love of the father. I have to know it. So here's what I did. I dove in head first. I read the Song of Solomon. I read the life of David. I listened to different preachers. I did everything I could to saturate myself in the love of God. Mm. And what it was doing, Donna, it was healing my heart. When I would read the Psalms, when David would say, he delivered me because he delighted in me. I thought, you know what? <laughs> I, that's ministering to me even now as I'm saying it to yeah, you. Yeah. He delivered me. He gets me out of messes because he thinks the world of me. <laughs> you know? And you know, Zephaniah 317, he rejoices over me and he loves me. And Song of Solomon 2, his banner over me is love, not shame, not pain, not regret. And so when I dove in in my early 20s into the love of the Father and studied and worshiped and prayed and, and got my heart healed, uh, the, what happened is it changed me. Mm. And, and I never, I've never come out of that pool of his love, so to speak. I've dove in, I've never come out. And, and every day I'm understanding his love a little more, but that's, that's my journey right. of the love of the father, right. because right. he had, let, let's, for those who are watching the historical memory of what you've been through will never change. It happened good, bad, or ugly. It happened. But the sting of that memory can go down. Yes. In the sting of my father's death, that pain is, is, is non-existent. I'm mm. going to see him again one day in heaven, but, but that sting that pain has been filled. It's been overtaken by the love of the father. Mm -hmm. And it's that way with anything mm -hmm. in your life. Right. So whatever you're facing in your life that has caused trauma or pain or, or upsetness or misunderstanding God, uh, God, God will take that pain and replace it with his love. And it changes you from the end. He, what happens, the Lord's telling me it, right now for you is I literally, this is God talking, I literally rewrite history for you because yeah. his love captivates your heart in such a way that it changes the way you even mm -hmm. live your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happened and that was a bad thing, but I don't have that pain there anymore. Right. And that's how powerful right. his love right. is. Right, right. So he was replacing, yeah. as you read and as you received that mm -hmm. word and yeah. his promises and everything, he was replacing the the abandonment, the, oh, exactly. this is not fair. All of those emotions and, and fears and the feelings with that love and that joy and that wow of what really that's the way you feel about me. Exactly. That, uh, that's it was amazing. all swallowed up within his love. And I, you know, I like Ryan that you say, you know, this is my circumstance, but I know that it's, it's not everybody's circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. Another one might be this, this might be a huge one. I think is uh, not so much. I didn't have a good example of it, but self-worth, how could, how could God love me? Yeah. It's the self-worth issue. And I have to tell you something, Donna, when I was uh, a teenager, the enemy capitalized on my, the pain of my dad dying. Mm. And so I did have suicidal thoughts because my so self-worth tanked yeah. because, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't have a dad to walk me through. Now my mom's a woman of God, as yes, you, you know her yes. personally, but, uh, but you still need that father figure too. And, uh, there's a lot of people that are struggling with low self-worth. And that's why your worth is not found in drugs or sexual addiction or relationships or anything else. Your, your worth is defined by father's love for you. And once we understand that it changes our identity, mm -hmm. it shifts our mm -hmm. focus on, you know, I, I'm the one, you know, five times down in the book of John, John declared, I'm the one that Jesus loves. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I mean, he got to write that about himself because it was his own book, but he declared, I am the one that Jesus mm -hmm. loves. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that I'm the one that he loves, then our self-worth begins to be only rooted in what he thinks about me and not what other th others think about me or what I think about myself. Yes, yes. I, I want to do this right here. I know we usually wait to the yeah. end of the program, but I feel so strongly that I, I would love it if you would talk to those that are watching and, and instruct them the way you instruct when you're ministering as far as finding that place and sewing that in and allowing that revelation to come to you. 
My friend, I don't know what your circumstances or what you've been through or what you're going through right now, but and I'll be the first one to tell you, I've been alive not too long, but long enough, 47 years, I've been alive to know, long enough to know that life is tough. But with Jesus, you can make it through anything. And what, here's where you can start today. You have to understand the scriptures of how he feels about you and what he thinks about you. The, the Bible's loaded with scriptures. You can't read the word of God through your soulish emotions. Well, that didn't work. He doesn't feel that way. Just because you don't feel love doesn't mean uh, he doesn't love you. He loves you with an everlasting love. His love has no beginning and his love has no end. So what you have to do is find a place to get along with God and say, you know what? My life has been a mess. I, I know, or I've been through this or I've been through that. Lord, I give that to you. Mm -hmm. I release that to you. And Lord, fill those places, those lonely. I, I, I feel loneliness on people right now. Take that grief, Lord. Take that loneliness yes. and replace it with your love. And then, my friend, you literally have to renew your mind in the truth of what God thinks about you. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself falling back in the same thing over and over. And let me tell you, a lot of people are addicted today to, to different things because of what, you, what Donna said about self-worth. Mm -hmm. And when you can just get along with God and say, Lord, my worth is found only in you. Mm -hmm. My worth is found. I, mm -hmm. I feel the love of the Father right now. Mm -hmm. And Father, I pray that you embrace your sons and daughters right yes. now. With your, wrap your arms around your sons and daughters. Let them feel the love of the Father. I see somebody you're crying right now because you're receiving it. My friend, it's one thing to know he loves you. It's time to receive his love for you. And you simply do that. It's not hard just by saying, Lord, I receive. I receive your yes. love. Yes. Go into even the darkest places in my heart, Lord. I receive your love for me. And then, my friend, you start living out of that reality yes. that you're the one that Jesus loves. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to take a little break. And Ryan says that once you've received that love, once you've become that new creation, the real journey begins. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm sure you're enjoying listening to Ryan Bruss today. Ryan, thank you for being thank with you. us and thank sharing you. the revelation of yes. the Father's love. Oh, my. Yeah. I can feel it. I, I can, can feel it right now. It. Oh, yeah. When you when you talk to mm -hmm. the people about it, when you share it, because it's real. Yeah, absolutely. It's real. It, yeah. It's not a theory. It's real. It's something that is revealed to us when we become born again, when we receive that love. What's what's the the big difference now? Well, the, the big difference is you go through the ordinary moments of life. You know, a, a lot of a lot of people, Donna, are looking for one mountaintop experience to the next, but life is not like that. Mm -mm. You know, we want it, it'll be like that one day, but but life is changing diapers and changing tires and and paying bills and going to work. And right. so I I have learned to live loved, as the Bible says in Jude even the ordinary moments of life. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen that are right. not good, right. but it, you face it differently because you're, you're, you're facing it out of sonship and mm -hmm. being a daughter of God. And you don't take things, you ready for this? You don't take things so personally. Oh, because yeah. you you can rest in the Father's love, mm -hmm. and right. and you 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 respond to the way people treat you differently. Everything changes because you you live in the embrace of God, and you don't have to run. You don't have to run when everything's not perfect. Yeah, You're not running away yeah. from God. A lot of Christians are running away from God when things happen, and God's saying, "Run to me. You're my son. You're my daughter. Run to me." And, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fill your heart again mm -hmm. with love. And but when we when we live loved and adored and cherished, uh, we we go through life with our head up. Yes. We don't put our head down. Our we we walk around. It's like when you uh, there's everybody's been there. What I'm about to say. You put on your best looking suit. Yeah. Your your hair is perfect. And you know I got makeup on right now. I'm looking good today because everything's kind of in place because for this show. But you don't need all that to feel loved. You don't need a lot of money to feel loved. You don't, you, you just live love because of what's in here. Yeah. You're yeah. changed from the inside out. Yeah. And no matter if I'm living in a tent or living in a mansion, I'm loved. Right. You know, it right. goes through every other right. area of our right. lives. Tell us 
about going to a graduation ceremony. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> Me too. Uh, my my uh, <laughs> niece was graduating a couple years ago from high school, and there's about 3,000 people there, uh, give or take, and, and they made an announcement right up front. They said, please hold the applause uh, until the end because we have so many students at public school that need to get through. And so, you know, people were behaving themselves, and about the 12th person in, they announced this young man's name, and the, again, 3,000 people there. We hear in this big auditorium, that's my boy! <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, and everybody cheered for this young man. Nobody, I didn't know who he was, but everybody cheered for him, and because you could, it was so clear, that's my boy. Now, I don't know if the kid used to get bad grades, or he barely made it, or, or he get great grades, whatever the case might be, it so touched me because that's how Father thinks about uh, us. That's my girl. Wow. That's my boy. Wow. Just when you wake up in the morning, God's like, that's my boy. That's my girl. And when we have a revelation that you're his son and you're his daughter, I mean, it changes everything. I'm telling you, you you're you not happy a lot of times because you don't have a revelation that you're his son and you're his daughter. And when, when you walk around realizing that, that daddy's got it and everything's going to be okay. And, and listen, friend. It may not look good right now, but everything is going to be okay because you're trusting in the love of the Father. Yes. Now, we've got a couple of minutes left, so I want to be sure. I know as you have felt it and I have felt the presence of the Holy Spirit on this program today. Yes. Will you take just a minute and pray for those that may be needing Him today and needing those, those hurts healed? Absolutely. My friend, I know it's like to have a broken heart. I know it's like to be wounded to be discouraged, to be depressed. And there's many of you watching yeah. that you love the Lord. I mean, you love Him, mm. but you struggle with receiving His love in return. It's because there's things on your heart that need to be healed. You're not a bad person. You're not the black sheep of God's family. You're loved. You are adored. You may not feel that way right now, but you are. Yes. And right now I pray for you, my friend, that those wounds and that hurt be melted away off your heart yes. right now in Jesus' name. Yes. If you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. And my friend, one of the hardest things to do is forgive yourself. When you don't forgive yourself, you live in shame. And right now I break the spirit of shame and guilt and condemnation over you. And right now I release the love of the Father. Hallelujah that you be filled with the very presence of God. I feel it. I feel it coming out of my body into your home or wherever you're watching. May you be filled with God's love. Yes. May yes. you be f healed because of God's love. May you enjoy living loved by God. Father, I thank you that you're touching everybody that's watching and that they're never going to be the same again and that they're going to live in the love of the Father. And they're going to, from this moment on, they're going to realize that they are God's number one favorite in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you are God's number one favorite as well. Please join us again next time. Call now and get this powerful brand new book, Killing Lazarus by Ryan Bruss, plus his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, How to Drive the Enemy Meshuggah Crazy, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9714. I have been a Christian for over 42 years, and he is the enemy has tried to drive me crazy. And I am sick and tired of that, and I'm sick and tired of the enemy trying to drive his God's people crazy, so we're going to make him crazy. Through Ryan's powerful brand new book, you will discover why the enemy is trying to take you out. Understand what you can do about it. Learn how to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness as you walk in your God-given destiny and calling. Discover how to pay the enemy back for everything he has done to you in the past. The book includes 100 declarations, Ryan's personalized verses of scripture to help keep the enemy away and cause him to be on the run. The enemy is trying to take your calling. And when I teach this, it 
flips everything around and turns it back on the devil so you start to make the devil pay. And believe it or not, the enemy is afraid of you. Plus, you will receive his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, How to Drive the Enemy Mashuga Crazy. Now it's time to take your stand, move into your breakthrough, and make him feel crazy and frustrated. In this teaching series, Ryan shares how to keep the devil on the run by keeping the greatest commandment, to love God above all else, allowing your heart to be filled with love for one another, speaking often of the blood of Jesus, praying in our heavenly language, wielding the Word of God as a sword. Now is the time to push back, live on the offense, and keep the devil on the run. Discover why the enemy is trying to take you out and what you can do about it. Don't miss out on getting this powerful brand new book, Killing Lazarus by Ryan Bruss, plus his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, How to Drive the Enemy Meshuggah Crazy, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9714. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9714 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.